The Daily Code Snippet. Today we will add a Google font to our demo code page after fixing a style with our header. So here we are again in BB Edit looking at the code of our demo page. And one thing that uh, I noted with our CSS that we need to go back and correct is if you start scrolling up now that we have some content in our uh, sections, you notice that this uh, white uh, background color doesn't really extend all the way over. And so when you um, scroll up, the table that extends out will look like this. And this is, of course, not desirable. And what's happening here is basically the background color is extending over what content we have included. So we only have four buttons. And so right after that, the, the, uh, the background con uh, color ends. So how would we fix something like this? And basically all you need to do is our header. We want it to extend the entire width of the browser uh, window. And so we're going to just say 100%. We'll save that and then refresh our demo code page. And then now you see that the white bar extends all the way across because our header extends all the way across. Um, so we've gone back and fixed that. And then the other thing I wanted to show you quickly is how do we go about adding, you know, a, a font that we desire uh, for a page rather than having it pick whatever font it finds. So if we go to Google Fonts, um, you know, you have all sorts of different fonts that you can choose and you can choose whichever font you like. So when you open um, Open Sans uh, in your Google Font window, it'll give you all the options that are available. So you have um, light, regular, semi-bold, bold, extra bold, and italic. And you can look at the glyphs palette. It'll tell you a little bit about uh, the designer and the licensing. So one of the main reasons that people use Google Fonts, of course, is because you don't have to pay licensing fees with Google Fonts. And that's why they become particularly popular. Um, as a um, Adobe user, you also probably have access to Adobe Typekit. And so the process would be similar uh, for any web-based font foundry that you would go to the page and you need to get the embed code. And so for Google Fonts, the way you do it is you select which styles you want to embed. And so I'm just going to pick the light, the light italic, the regular, the regular italic, and the bold, and the bold italic. And um, if we know that we're not going to use a particular weight, then we shouldn't include it. I'm kind of keeping it open by selecting all of these. Um, and why is that important? Well, because the more fonts you select from the fo uh, from the family, um, you know, the more that your page is loading and it slows it down. So you really only want to choose the fonts that you know that you're going to use um, when uh, coding your web page. So what you have here is there's two different options and for bringing in the uh, font into your your uh, web page. There's the link option and there's the at import option. And um, what I'm going to do is use the link option. And there's also the option of downloading if you are using your uh, the Google font into something like uh, your InDesign or uh, other type of um, desktop version. So the other thing you want to make note of is it says here CSS rules to specify families. And the reason this is important is because you want to know how you're going to write this out for it to choose the font that you're loading in. So Open Sans is a font that has actually two words. And so whenever you're using a font that has two words, it needs to be in these single quotes on each side. And you need to put that space in between. And this is actually a font stack, meaning if it can't find Open Sans for whatever reason, so perhaps Google servers are down or there's an issue with the internet and it can't load the font. And in that case, it's gonna choose a sans serif font uh, preferentially over a serif font uh, when it's trying to find a font to use since it cannot load open sans for whatever reason. So we've copied our code and um, we need to go to our code page. And what we're gonna do 
is we're going to add it. So anything like loading fonts, uh, loading style sheets, that all goes in our head. So we have our opening tag for our head here, and we have our closing tag for our head here. And we're going to put this above the styles. We want it to load the font in before it's trying to do the styles because we're going to start entering uh, the use of the font in our styles in the style section so it needs to have already loaded the font so we want to put it in beforehand and what I'm going to do is create a typography section in our styles so this code is basically telling the browser to connect to Google to connect to the Google API to, to get these fonts the open sans and the weights that we chose so the light the light italic, the regular, the regular italic, and the bold and the bold italic. And so if we want to start including this in our page and we want it to be used globally, we can say the body and it will, um, anything that's a child of the body is going to pick up this um, command. So we want to tell it the font family, and we want to use those single quotes and put the words open sans, as we saw on the page. And then uh, our stack, that if it can't find open sans, it's going to pick any sans serif it finds. So if we save and refresh, we now see that it's pulling in a sans serif and it's pulling it in globally. So it's affected all of the typography on the entire page. And it's still using the uh, hierarchy um, that comes kind of preset because we're using H1, H2, H3, H4, and paragraph tags and list tags. Um, but now that you've entered a font, you can actually control the size of things by um, by adding into our style sheet. So if we wanted to affect the size of, let's say the H1, we would tell it, you know, font size, and then we could pick a number. Um, we can see how this looks. And then um, for letting, the equivalent of letting on the web is essentially the line height. And um, a standard, uh, a standard reading would be 1.3 to 1.5 M's. We're going to save that and take a look. So you can see it got a little smaller and it's kind of close to here. Um, we can either push it down by increasing the line height. Um, we can also see if we can add some spacing above our navigation. So uh, if we look here, we've told it to have no padding around. Uh, but what we want to do maybe is add a little bit of padding to the top and the bottom. And so if you are using um, um, the padding or margin, typically you add four numbers, and that represents the top, right, bottom, and left. Uh, but when you only, if you're okay with the top and the bottom being the same number and the left and right being the same number, then you can just use the two numbers. And again, so here, 20 pixels represents the top and the bottom and zero represents the left and the right. So now if we save that and we refresh, then you can see that it's a little bit pushed down. And I think what I'll do actually is add the line height to the body. So we have our six levels of headings, and we're just going to make it kind of cascade down in size.
Presented by Designers Learn Code.